digital transformation will have a huge impact on society as a whole and on the business world in particular. It will radically change the way companies develop products and serve customers. New markets and competitors will emerge overnight. Tried and trusted business models will be rendered obsolete. So what can you do to future-proof your enterprise? SAP S4 HANA will help you pave the way for success in the digital age. It enables a powerful combination of analysis, simulation and forecasting, giving you actionable information in real time and helping you make the right decisions for your business. Access vital facts and figures via a user-friendly interface, anywhere, anytime, via any device. Generate made-to-measure reports without the need for specialist IT skills, quickly, easily and simply. Save costs by streamlining your processes and simplifying your SAP landscape from the very first day of deployment. Fujitsu and SAP S4 HANA will enable you to access more and better data faster and will ensure you have all the information you need whenever you need it. The SAP S4 HANA platform and Fujitsu's SAP HANA experts will help you squeeze maximum value out of your data. Whether SAP Consulting, Big Data Analytics, Process Optimization, SAP Hosting or the right operating mode, Fujitsu offers you all the flexible advice and assistance you need. As one of the very first official SAP HANA partners, we have a unique skill set based on our hands-on experience gained in hundreds of successful SAP HANA projects. Discover the exciting possibilities with your very own data. In joint workshops, we will analyze your situation, identify opportunities and develop scenarios in line with your specific business imperatives. Future-proof your business for the digital age with SAP S4 HANA and Fujitsu. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for staying and attending the session with us uh, today. I know that I'm um, between you and lunch, so I will be very quick in, uh, in finishing my presentation and uh, basically sharing with you uh, what I intend to share today. I would like also to thank Fujitsu for inviting SEP to be a keynote speaker in that, uh, in that event in this fantastic venue. Uh, just a quick correction, I'm the Chief Operating Officer for SAP for UE and Oman, not for the whole Middle East, and I have the pleasure to be with you uh, today here. So my topic today is about reimagining business for the digital economy. Uh, before I start, just a quick glimpse on what SAP is doing uh, here in the, uh, in the region and in the whole world. So SAP is the um, world leader in terms of enterprise applications. And we are serving customers, around 345,000 customers all across the world in more than 190 different countries. Uh, when we look at our uh, presence uh, in the Middle East, our headquarters is in uh, the UAE. Uh, we've integrated our offices earlier this year with the presence of the, uh, um, uh, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan, who came to our office together with His Highness Sheikh Ahmed bin Saeed Al Maktoum to open the, uh, the offices in, in the Middle East. We have around 700 people who are based out of the UAE serving the whole uh, Europe, Middle East and Africa um, uh, out of this center that we have. Uh, in our applications, we cover 25 different industries um, and 11 different lines of businesses. So our applications are designed and developed to serve those industries with industry-specific focus. So for instance, if you go to an airline company, we have the specific solutions for that airline that is completely different, for instance, when it comes to the government um, uh, solutions. We also not only deal with uh, big enterprises or major enterprises, our uh, customer base now is also diversifying to uh, cover the uh, mid-sized companies and 80% of our customer base today because of the changes that we've seen in the market is coming from mid-sized enterprises. In terms of cloud, we aspire to be the cloud company running on SAP HANA. We have currently 125 million subscribers in the cloud, which is a massive number. We have uh, 44 data centers, 
uh, that are um, operating out of 11 different countries. Last year, we had our CEO, Bill McDermott, here in the UAE, meeting with our strategic customers and the government officials, and there were um, an ask that came out of this meeting, or during, in fact, this meeting from the officials asking to have a data center in the UAE. There was a commitment that was made at the time to open a data center in the UAE, Following that, there was, um, in fact, uh, an investment decision of a 200 million US dollars to invest in a data center in the UAE, and our data center is coming live by the end of this year. So we're offering public cloud in country by the end of this year in the UAE, which is a massive uh, um, uh, investment from, from SEP side, and it just respects, basically, the customer demands that are coming from the market. Uh, in terms of startups, um, I, I really enjoyed the presentation that was showing the uh, ideas that came up for, from startups. And if we look at the, the startups, the way they think, uh, they are thinking now about meeting the demands, the digital demands that are coming from, from the market uh, itself. So everyone is, is thinking differently uh, today. And I would like to give you a very nice example. Uh, earlier this year, uh, in the presence of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the uh, Prime Minister of the UAE and the ruler of Dubai, uh, SAP was awarded to be the premier technology partner for Expo 2020. For those of you who do not know what Expo 2020 is, and I'm sure most of the people in the room is, it's the biggest events that run, uh, or the Expo basically are the biggest events. It's a six months uh, duration event, and it runs every year in a different country. In 2020, it will be here in the UAE, in Dubai. And there is a massive site uh, for those of you who are uh, not living in the UAE uh, that is built specifically to accommodate the Expo. So SAP will be delivering the technology to accommodate the demands of 25 million visitors that are expected to be attending the Expo. And uh, when we work uh, with the Expo team, and uh, I'm really honored to be part of the uh, UAE team here who are leading the discussions with Expo 2020, Everything is forward-looking, okay? We do not know what will ha be happening in 2020. We do not know what would be the, the, the customer requirements at the time. And the, the previous, uh, just before me, he was saying that when Apple, for instance, uh, designs or uh, develops new technologies, they're putting in mind a five years old uh, person, you know, to see how they can access uh, and do or, or use the, the systems. This is exactly the same way we deal with Expo. We get young people, and we ran a hackathon in our office, 24 hours hackathon. We invited people to come from all over the world. They slept in the office, and after one day, those people who do not have any knowledge of SAP were able to come up with innovative ideas that fit specifically for Expo 2020. We will have those getting awards during JITEX, and we would love to invite you to have visibility on how uh, such entrepreneurs you know, can build and deliver uh, ideas for the, for the current uh, um, challenges that we face today in a very short time. Uh, in terms of partners who are certified on SAP HANA, we have Fujitsu as one of the lead partners in, in that respect. So they have their practice uh, that uh, they can use to, um, first of all, in terms of advisory services, in terms of even uh, providing some um, funding for some of the uh, co-innovation ideas or financing for some of our selected clients, you know, to help them move through the digital uh, agenda. Uh, finally, we also have our uh, supplier networks and our uh, Ariba system, which is a system that basically co accommodates two and a half million companies on the same platform, which is larger than uh, Amazon, eBay, and Alibaba combined. This supplier network allows organizations to have the whole um, RFP process, the whole negotiation, whether it's auctioning, reverse auctioning, um, uh, contract negotiation on this network. We have it deployed in several uh, customers in the UAE and across the world, of course. Uh, I won't mention one of which is uh, Etihad Airways uh, here in the UAE, where they are uh, significantly realizing the benefits of such solution. Same applies as well for the um, uh, travel and expense management solution, which is Conquer. 45 million users who are in enterprises who are booking their uh, travels on the system and pre presenting or using the, um, uh, uh, putting their expense reports on the system is itself. I would like just to walk you through some uh, studies that have been made. 
Um, and those studies are showing the shift that we're seeing today in uh, the, the current environment. So 72% of the global CEOs believe that the coming three years are pivotal for their industries. And whether they would make the right decisions or not would depend on, on the, you know, would, would basically be pivotal for the existence of their companies compared to the previous 50 years. Also, another research said that companies that depend on 50% of their revenue from digital or from digital sources get or achieve more profitability and revenues compared to others who are depending on uh, traditional uh, revenue streams. And a third research said that 5% of the organization have really mastered the digital um, capabilities to provide key differentiations compared to their uh, competitors in the market. So it's a huge shift that we see today. And if I look at those organizations, it's not necessary enterprises. It also comes from governments. And I would like to mention a very nice initiative here in the UAE that is being led by the uh, ruler of Dubai, where he has announced that he wants the government agencies or the government uh, in, U in Dubai to be 10 years more advanced than any other government in the world. So when we have such a leadership, when we have such um, ex example or such push, you know, to push people in the right direction and think about what would be next in terms of the digital age, you find the whole, you know, uh, the whole ecosystem is shifting also to accommodate or um, incorporate more digital. And to that end, it's very interesting how um, the, the new applications are shifting and how people are uh, developing their new applications. So 75 by, as per IDC, 75% of the new development is depending on artificial intelligence, machine learning, IoT. Uh, which is very interesting. Of course, yes, there are maybe some security risks that comes uh, in play today, but the technology is advancing in a very fast pace uh, to, to cover those aspects. And another research by IDC uh, states that by 28, uh, 2019, all the interaction between different applications would be dependent on APIs. So every single application that would be developed to accommodate future uh, plans should be open enough to exchange and collaborate with other applications, even if it's developed by competitive offering. And Gartner Research states that by 2019, natural uh, uh, language generation would be part of the um, application. So it's not only depending on uh, um, inputs via the, the normal channels. No, how can you have a conversation based on your natural language to interact with, uh, with, with those applications. Digital impact, if I look at the digital impact, it is really massive. Uh, specifically, if I compare uh, the US, for instance, 8% of the GDP in the US is coming from digital sources. When we go to Europe, when we move to Europe, it's 6.2% at the moment. However, in the Middle East, it's 4%. But if we think really about the reality of the Middle East here, we'll find that the, in the Middle East, we have a very young generation, which give us a very good foundation for, to even you know, move to a higher race compared to the US and, uh, the, uh, and Europe. And we have to think and put this in mind while we're thinking about the, the future. Because in the UAE, in Egypt, in Saudi Arabia, the youth population compared to Europe it's completely different, you know. We have tremendous opportunities ahead of us, and that's why we need to think also um, in, in how to utilize those uh, youth and how to uh, build um, uh, platforms that would contribute to the digital economy and contribute to the GDP of the countries. When we look also to uh, the enterprises or the, uh, the evolution, uh, therefore, the infrastructure, in terms of networks, in terms of storage, in terms of processing, there have been high advanced uh, in, in the capabilities of those um, uh, solutions and those offerings. And Fujitsu is one of the leaders as well who are providing us with such capabilities to help uh, leapfrog and help provide a foundation for a digital core that would accommodate the, the demands of the, uh, of the um, uh, current uh, businesses. When I look at inter intelligent enterprise, and again, enterprise is not meant to be just 
companies. It can mean governments, and um, it's very interesting to see how the governments are thinking differently. I had the honor as well to meet with the, the Ajman government uh, two days ago, and looking at their structure and looking at their thinking, they are also very forward-looking, actually. They have decided, for instance, to appoint a lady who would be the chief knowledge officer, which is something that I've not seen personally have not seen before in, uh, in other government entities, and having the chief knowledge officer, you know, it's not only about data, it's about how can I make sure that I get the, the, the required information out of this data and provide the right knowledge to the organizations uh, to, to make the right decision as well. So having the digital core available to provide both analytical and transactional data in the same space is something that SAP has decided to invest in. So around five years ago, our founder has decided to completely develop the whole application foundation from scratch, okay, and to simplify the whole application foundation to be ready for the future. So this was a very bold decision at the time, which proved to be the right decision. And on top of that, we have integrated the whole portfolio of applications for the 25 different industries to be dependent on this digital core. In addition as well, we are extending that with our cloud applications. And moreover, we are getting our data framework and our innovation, which is SAP Leonardo, to be part of that uh, platform. Two quotes that I would like to bounce by you just to have uh, something to think about uh, by, um, uh, by a researcher in MIT. Uh, he believes that while a lot of companies are doing well in, uh, uh, are doing digital, very few of them are doing it well. So it's not only about just moving or implementing a new IT solution. That's not digital. It's the impact and the change that you need to have inside the organizations to accommodate and deliver really value with this digital uh, innovation. And the ones that succeed focus more on the transformation, not on the technology. It's not, technology itself is not important. It's not the end result. What is the transformation? What is new? How are you simplifying uh, the experience to the end user is, is something that uh, of interest. And uh, this clearly demonstrates the, the shift uh, that we see today and the focus from keeping the lights on that used to be in the past, maybe seven years ago or four years ago, most of the investment, if I talk to any CIO at the time, they were focused on how can I just stabilize the system, how can I make sure that the lights are on and deliver what the business is expecting from me. And to that end, 72% of the budget was shifted towards that goal. And 28% was shifted towards giving something new. Now the discussions that we are having with the, uh, either with the government sector or even with the private sector is completely different. We go, for instance, to, um, uh, we had a very interesting discussion uh, and partnership with one of the waste management companies, uh, which is called BIA, which is based out of Sharjah, where their uh, leadership, starting from the chairman, CEO, and the whole leadership team understood that it does not necessarily mean that they are good in waste management, that they should only focus on waste management. So they have decided basically to diversify and they have established a new company that is focused on delivering digital services. So nowadays they will be delivering services in healthcare, they will be delivering services in transformation digital services, not only in Sharjah but in the whole region. So such thing, you know, give, gives us or point us to the um, other direction, which is the vision towards 2020 on what would be there. So it's not about keeping the lights on. It's about investing in the right direction to provide new innovation and new revenue growth for the businesses. One innovation that was uh, announced earlier today from SAP was SAP Leonardo, and we have a fantastic partnership with Fujitsu. So Fujitsu has established their innovation center in Waldorf to accommodate for the uh, SAP Leonardo, which is uh, a core for machine learning, blockchain, artificial intelligence, big data, analytics, and Internet of Things. 
we would love to, to have discussions with you and see who would be the, the customers that we would like to co-innovate together with and come up with some new ideas and forward-thinking um, uh, 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 solutions that have never been implemented uh, in the market. I think Fujitsu is providing the funding even you know, for some uh, co-innovation co ideas. Also SAP would love to have this co-innovation ideas um, with you at no charge, you know, we can go for a pilot and then we can work together and come up with uh, something that would change the world. I would like to thank you for your time and I hope you uh, got something out of my presentation. I will be available outside for answering any questions if required. Thank you very much.